Hey there stampers, this is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada. And thank you so much for joining me today. Um, today we are going to create a scrapbook layout using the Change is Beautiful April 2022 Paper Pumpkin Kit. So we're gonna go through that in a minute, but there are some things that I wanted to chat with you about before we jump into our crafting project today. Okay. So I've got my iPad here. Make sure we're kind of straight. All right, so we are nearing the end of our 2021-2022 annual catalog. So this goes until April 2nd, which is next Monday. Uh, so you'll want to check the last chance list and just make sure that you've got everything on there that um, that's on your wish list because a lot of stuff is being retired and there are some items on that list that are on sale up to 50% off. So you definitely want to check that out. Now this time of the year can be a little bit confusing because we've got that one catalog that is retiring, but our mini catalog still goes until the end of June. Now closer to um, the month of June, we will get a retiring list from this catalog as well. So just know that the product that is in here will still continue to carry over. Okay. All right. And then exciting, exciting next Tuesday, our brand new 2022, 2023 annual catalog goes live. Okay. So lots of great new products. I can't share a little peek, but I do want to let you know a few things about this catalog. First of all, if you live in Canada and do not have a current demonstrator and would like a hard copy of the catalog, please send me a message. I'd be happy to send one to you. Um, and second of all, I'm going to do a catalog kickoff. I'm going to kick it off with daily Facebook lives from May 2nd to 5th next week. So Monday through Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time, I will be going live here on Facebook and um, I will post the videos onto YouTube afterwards as well. Um, but sharing some, some of the product that we were able to pre-order, I'll have a project every day. On Tuesday, when we're able to share the inside of the catalog, I'll do a little catalog tour, share some of my favorites. Um, and I'll also be sharing some of the projects from upcoming classes, which by the way, I believe I've posted all of my upcoming classes. You can find them on my website at stampedtreasures.com. Um, under the events page. Okay, so you can check that out. And then yesterday, Stampin' Up! announced an in-color starter kit. I am so excited about this because this is a fabulous opportunity for anybody who has considered joining Stampin' Up! or um, if you know that at the beginning, well, most of us, when the new catalog goes live, we always have a long wish list. And if the in colors are on your wish list, this could be a great opportunity for you. Okay, so what it is, is when you purchase the starter kit, which is completely customizable, you get to choose $165 worth of product. That will, can be product from the new catalog. Anything that you want apart from host sets or host products. Um, and you can choose up to $165. You only pay $135. There's no shipping and there's no GST on top of that. Okay. So right there, that is a fabulous deal. And that's an everyday deal. However, from May 3rd to May 31st, when you purchase the starter kit, so you choose that $165 dollars worth of product for only $135, Stampin' Up! is going to throw in an extra $91 and 25 cents of free product. And that is going to include the new in color ink pad collection. So full size ink pads, all five of them. They're going to throw in the six by six in color DSP. They'll throw in a mixed pack of the in color cardstock. And you'll also get some in color grid paper as well. So that's an extra 9125. All right. So if you do, if we do the math, $165 worth of free stuff plus the 90, or not $165 worth of product plus the $91.25 worth of free stuff, plus you add on the shipping and the GST, that works out to $298 that you're going to get for only $135. So you can see that that is such a fabulous deal. 
So don't miss out on that. That starts May 3rd to 31st. And I would love to have you join my Stamp to Treasures team. We would love to have you. All right, so if you have questions on that, just send me a message. I'm happy to answer those questions. Okay, now, like I said, we are going to scrapbook with the Change is Beautiful April 2022 kit. So let me share what is in here. Okay, first of all, there's a little peek at next month's kit or a little hint at what's to come. So next month, we're celebrating the new in colors. Um, and every subscriber will have the opportunity to win a golden voucher, which, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> which is worth $34 Canadian in Stampin' Up! product. Okay, so some of the paper pumpkin kits that go out will include that golden voucher. So that's something exciting. And it, that next month's kit introduces all five of the new in colors. All right, so you can look forward to that. You want to subscribe by um, what month will we be in? May, by May 10th in order to receive that kit. All right, now this month's kit, we received the con or the supplies to create nine cards. So let me share the cards here. So I always make one of each of the projects and then I like to use the rest of my kit for other things. Okay, so here it is here. And then I love the little peek at what's inside and then the decorated inside. So fun. So that one. And then the other two are fun folds. So we've got this one and then it opens up. And then the back looks like that. All right. And then the third one. So you get enough supplies to create three of each of these. And then the back of this one looks like this. So super fun, quite different from some of our other kits. And then of course there's printed envelopes in here as well. These are the printed envelopes. So we've got a white with pink or pink with white polka dots. We've got that watercolor kind of wash background. And then we've got one with some stars. All right, so of course in your paper pumpkin kit, you get an exclusive stamp set. So this month, this is the stamp set. Let me show you so you get a little couple little butterflies there's a little caterpillar there's a little I think these are meant to be like little flowers with leaves and the sayings are every day is a new day I'm so proud of who you've become may this new season hold wonderful new experiences I believe in you beautiful things take time all right so that's the stamp set so I'm going to keep that out you always get a, a stamp in spot so this month it's melon mambo um, you get adhesive. So if you need mini glue dots, you'll get mini glue dots and dimensionals. So I'm going to leave those out. And then if you need any twine or embellishments, then you get those as well. So there's no twine or ribbon in this kit, but there are these fun little embellishments. So I'm going to pull those out. And then I've already gone ahead and pulled out one of everything from the kit. So these are just the leftover pieces that I have. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. All right, and then the other thing that you get, so here it shows all the contents of the kit. Um, and then it gives you some alternate ideas, but also on here it gives you uh, the coordinating Stampin' Up! colors. So I have pulled out some of those colors. I've pulled out Bermuda Bay, Melon Mambo, and Crushed Curry, and then of course a black. Okay, so I think that's going to be the color combination that I go with for today's layout. And then let me share what else I've pulled out here. Okay, I wanted to use some ribbon. And we, didn't, we don't really have any ribbon in the colors that I wanted to use. However, I had some of this daffodil ruched ribbon, which is now retired. However, last I checked, which was only a couple weeks ago, it was on the clearance rack. So you might still be able to find that for a fabulous deal on the clearance rack. Okay, so you can check that. I've got my T-square here. I'm thinking I might do a little shaker pocket on the layout. So I pulled out my foam adhesive strips. I've got the picture this die set because you'll see in a minute here, I did pre-cut some a couple of these. Okay, so I'll share what my plan is with that. Now I've got all the pieces 
one of each of all the pieces from the kit here because I always try to go to the kit and use the supplies that are in the kit before I pull out anything else. But of course I needed a base, so I've got a white 12 by 12 base. I'm going to be documenting one 4 by 6 photo. It's a horizontal photo. Um, this was when we went out for dinner uh, during COVID for my daughter's birthday and I've matted it on a piece of white. So I've just got a sixteenth of an inch border all the way around. And then you can see that I've got two pieces of black. So this started as an eight and a half by 11. Okay, and then I trimmed it down a little bit because my plan is to use this piece. This is gonna go along this bottom piece. So, and this wasn't quite 11 inches. It was a little bit shorter. So what did I end up cutting it to? Let me see. Just in case you guys have this kit and want to recreate this layout. Okay, so I cut it down to 10 and three quarters and then it is four and a half inches tall. And then the extra piece, so this is still 10 and three quarters, but what I did was I used the picture this die and I cut two of these out. So I would have preferred to use a full sheet, but you can't fit a full sheet through the die cutting machine, right? So I did have to cut it in half, but I've got a plan on how I'm going to kind of stick them back together to make it appear that it is a full piece. So I love the picture this dies because if you look, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. What if I put, no, that doesn't really help. But there is stitching around each one of these circles. So, which is a really nice added detail to those dies. So it does that for the circles, but also the rectangles that are in there. And then I've also got all the leftover circles because I might incorporate these on there or some of them or use them for something else. So I've got those as well. I've got my window sheets here in case I do decide to go ahead with a shaker pocket. And for my shaker contents, I have a few things. So I have these leftover little pieces from that card, the one with the stars that kind of gives you a peek at the inside. I might use those. I also have these sparkle and shine sequence assortment, which has some stars, some little clear beads and some silver sequins in there. And then I also pulled out these. These are something new that's coming. They're called effervescent elements. And I'm kind of scared to open the lid. This is really full, but look at that. I thought that maybe doing a mix of all three would be a fun little shaker element. So we might do that, we'll have to see. And then the last thing that I pulled out is I had one of these old Celebrate wood words that we carried years and years and years ago. So I'm thinking that I might use the um, dark Bermuda Bay and color it so that it's Bermuda Bay so it kind of goes well with the, with the layout. Okay, so that will make up my title or at least that's what I'm thinking anyways. Okay. So now that we've gone through everything that I've pulled out, let's get started. Okay, so you can see that my intent is to kind of go like this and my photo is gonna go kind of on here. I am going to layer some, some mats and stuff or some scraps or something in behind the photo just to make it pop a little bit more and to bring some of the color that is down here up to the top. I'm gonna to back each one of these with different patterns. And like I said, I'll probably turn one of them um, into a shaker pocket. But before we do any of that, I do wanna add something to the background. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my blending brush. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to do this in Bermuda Bay or if I wanna do it in yellow. All right, so I want to add a little bit of color. Um, let's do, let's do yellow. Okay, 
So, and most of this center bit is going to be covered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit down here and I'm gonna do a little bit up here. And I don't have to worry about the center, okay? So I love doing this on my scrapbook layouts because it just, it's a great subtle background. So I'm just gonna pull in a scrap piece. Oh, there's something on that. Let's flip this over. Okay, so I'll tap off that excess ink and then I'm just gonna very lightly go in a circular motion and just add a bit of color. I'm not gonna go right to the edges. You can if you want. You could even do this multicolored. So if I wanted, I could do both the Bermuda Bay and the yellow. Where it overlapped, it would probably give me like a little bit of a green. Okay, and we'll do it the same thing, kind of up in the top. While I'm doing this, let's have a look at the com comments. Oh my gosh, okay. Good morning, Kim and Kathy and Trisha and Sue and Shauna and Sarah, Shirley and Kim. Welcome, happy Friday, everyone. One of my friends just posted the forecast, for those of you who are local, um, she just posted the forecast for the weekend. At some point this, this coming week, we're supposed to hit 25 degrees. Isn't that crazy? Feels like we have not had a spring yet. Okay, that should be good. Now I wanna stamp on top of it. So I want to use this butterfly stamp. Actually, I might end up using both butterfly stamps. So there's one that's a full butterfly and there's one that is a partial, like just like a side view of a butterfly. I'm thinking I might use both of them. Just grabbing another block. Now what I need to decide is I initially thought because this is there's a lot of black on this layout. I thought if I stamped the butterflies in black, they'd really pop off the page. But I think I'm gonna do them in a, a combination of colors. I think I might do them some in yellow and some in Bermuda Bay because there's already going to be a lot of black on there. So I'm just gonna ink up my butterfly. Look how pretty that butterfly stamps. Love it. Okay, and then we'll do I'm trying to think. It's hard to know where to stamp them when you haven't got your your focal pieces on here or your bigger pieces. I can always go back and add some more. And I know some of these are gonna end up getting covered over. Let's do one there. We'll add one more of these guys up here. Okay, and then I'm gonna do some yellow ones as well. So I'll just give my stamps a quick clean, which I have to find my stamp cleaner first. I was stamping this morning and my desk behind me is just a disaster. Okay, so we'll add a few more of these in both, or both of these. Do the yellow one. Okay. We'll start with that. Like I said, we can always go back and add some more in once we've gotten those big pieces put down. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this out of the way for a minute or for a few minutes and bring these two pieces back. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere this to that black piece and actually, you know what, I am gonna bring this back just because my background is black. It's really hard for you guys to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm just gonna use some multi-purpose glue 
I'm going to be pretty generous just because it is folded. There is score lines on here, but once I've put it down, nobody's going to notice. And this is going to create a really pretty border strip. So I'm putting it so that I have about an eighth of an inch on the left, the bottom, and the right hand side. So there's a little bit more of a gap up there, but that's okay. And I can trim that down if I feel like I need to. And then this is gonna go up here. What I'm gonna do, I think, I wanna attach these two pieces. So remember, the reason why I separated them was so that I could fit this piece through my die cutting machine. So I think this will be where these circles will come in handy. So what I'm gonna do is just line these up and then I'm gonna be, oh, there we go, moved it again. Really generous with my adhesive. We'll line these up. And then I'm putting it over cross, over cross, across both of them. And that will hold these two pieces together. And then I plan to use the ribbon to kind of cover that seam so that it will look like it was one whole piece. So I'm going to use some of these smaller circles. Now, if you wanted to save these circles for something else, you could just use scraps. And it doesn't even have to be cardstock. You could use um, just copy paper or scrap paper. There we go. Okay, so now it's like we have a solid piece. Okay, now this, like I said, I want to use some of the pieces that are in here so that I can put a little bit more emphasis on my photo. And I'm gonna do that before I start filling in these holes, just because um, I, then I know what kind of, what colors are where. Okay, so what I like to do is these envelopes, actually the whole inside is patterned. So they make for great mats on a photo. Okay, I'm having a look at this one. I don't wanna use the black side and this just has a bit too much pattern. So I'm definitely not gonna use that. I've got all these die cuts to embellish afterwards. There is a little bit of pink. So I, and he does have, Ethan does have a little bit of pink in his shirt. So I could use a little bit of pink. I could also use some yellow. Oh, and then I've got this one. Okay, let's have a look here. Okay, look at that. Okay, that's gonna be my next layer right there. And then I'll decide what to do afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead, oops, go ahead and add some adhesive to this. So for this, I often don't even measure. I just eyeball everything because it doesn't need to be a precise measurement. And then I'll just trim this down so that it's about, so this is about a 16th of an inch. So I'll trim that down. This could be used kind of up here, but I want to bring in some of this Bermuda Bay and the green. So I'm gonna open up my envelope. I know some of you are cringing, what a waste of an envelope, but you know what? I'm not wasting it, I'm going to use it. All right, so let's see. Okay, I like that, or I could go this way too. So when I map my photo, I don't necessarily happen to, or I, I don't necessarily have to mat it the whole way, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create like a little paper cluster or stack in behind, um, most likely on this side, but some of it might go along the bottom as well, okay? Shauna, unfortunately, I did not get an extra one for this month. I do not have an extra kit. Okay, so I'm gonna cut up this little area and that just shredded that envelope. Let's hope that I'll cut off these bits. Okay, that cut better. I'm gonna straighten this. I 
I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do anything with this paper pumpkin kit um, because of time and what I have going on right now. So I decided not to get any extras because I find them hard to get rid of if I don't have time to, uh, to use them. Okay, so this is a little bit, the, our, the envelopes that are in the paper pumpkin kit are a little bit thinner and it kind of shredded them. So I'm just taking my scissors and just cleaning up that, that shredded paper. Okay, so let's see. If we did that and then a little bit of yellow here, let's trim this yellow one. The other thing I like to do is oftentimes I will tear, I will tear the bottom edge or the side edge when I do this kind of thing as well. All right. So see the yellow pulls in the yellow up here. We have a little bit on this side, but this is predominantly pink. And then we've got a little bit of that turquoise and the blue. Okay, do we want some more pink? I'm just gonna try something. Let's switch these layers a little bit. Yeah, I think I like that better. I want more of that blue showing. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Let's. So this time I'm gonna leave a little bit more room. So this. My mats here, I've got a white mat of about a sixteenth of an inch, then this pink is about a sixteenth of an inch. This one's going to be about an eighth of an inch, and this one's going to be a little bit more because it creates some interest if you have like a variety of widths for your photo mats. There we go. Okay. All right. I think that's good. Okay, so now I've got this scrap. This would be a great one to kind of back behind one of these circles. So now I'm just gonna kind of cut some pieces and fill in the backs. I'd like to use something with pink here. So let's cut this envelope flap off. I'm not even going to worry too much about the, the adhesive that's there. It will likely get covered over. Okay, move this down a little bit. I don't need to worry about covering or backing these because they're going to get covered over anyways. I'm thinking this is going to be my shaker pocket. Is this one here? Okay, what else? Let's take a look at this be nice to have some green in here. So let's trim this. And I can put this one in behind here. We'll do the Bermuda Bay in behind this one. We'll do some green. I might do this one down here green. Okay, so we want a pink over here. Grab some more pink. And we've got this yellow star one, but I don't think I want to cut up that envelope. What else do we have here? More yellow, there's blue, maybe some green. Okay. No, I don't like that. Maybe this one will be green. Okay, shaker pocket. What do I want to do here? What color? Should I do another pink? Do I have another pink scrap here? Let's try pink and see what it looks like. Okay, I think. 
think that's good. All right, now for my shaker pocket, I will need something in the background because I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking this turquoise. I'm thinking this will be a good background. There will be shaker contents in there. Okay, I'm happy with that. All right. Um, you know what, Sarah? I will get back to you on that. I'll check and see if, well, actually, refills, yeah, they should, if refills or extra kits are available, they will be online. Um, but you do have to be a Paper Pumpkin subscriber to, in order to purchase those kits. But you know what? I will look into it and I'll get back to you. I'll let you know, okay? And I'll let you know what your options are. Same with you, Shauna. If, if you still, if you want one, um, and there are full kits available, which I, there may be for this one, um, just because I know that a lot of people put their subscription on hold at this month. So some, sometimes that is often um, when there's lots of kits, full kits available to purchase afterwards. Okay, so then my ribbon is gonna go across like this. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. All right, so now we can go ahead and I'm gonna start by adhering this side and then this side I will work on, I'll do my shaker pocket first and then I'll do everything else. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna add a little bit of adhesive around each one of these pockets. Now this bit is going to get covered over. So I'll do that. I'll trim this excess. And you know, when you're doing this, it does not matter what the back looks like. The back does not need to be pretty. Okay, so that, and that will likely get covered over. So I'm not too concerned with that. And then we had the green. So we'll do the green one. So again, I'll add a little bit of adhesive around the edges. And let's just trim this a little bit smaller. A string of adhesive there. Okay. I'll pop that on there. And then this one goes on here. Okay, so again, put some adhesive on here. Cover that over. Okay. All right. Now we're going to work on our shaker pocket. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I need to do is cut my window sheet. I don't know how many times I work on shaker pockets and I forget the window sheet. So I've got a little scrap here. So, and that we need the window sheet because we need to make sure our shaker contents don't fall out. Okay, so then we'll add some adhesive on here. And we're gonna stick th this on here like that. And you can see that I went over the edge, so I'm just gonna trick or over the the other circles. So I'm just gonna trim off that excess. Again, don't worry about what it looks like on the back. Okay, so we've got that. Now my next step is to create the height so that our shakers, shaker contents can move. So these you can use dimensionals but these foam adhesive strips are so easy and you can manipulate them so that you can do them in whatever shape you want. So I'm just going around the edges. And you wanna close it off so that none of your contents fall out. So make sure there's no gaps. There we go. 
All right. Next. Okay. Next up, we can put our contents in here. So the little shaker pieces that we want. Now, if I was wasn't going to like I've got this piece and this piece is going to go right on top like this so this is the easiest way to do it if I was going to flip this over and place this onto my background without adding this piece then what you would want to do is you'd want to figure out where your shaker content needs to go and just do a little pile of it here okay so if you look on my youtube channel I've got some videos on there uh, showing you how to put together a shaker a shaker project okay so I'm using some of these stars I'm not going to use too many of them because they are black and then I'm going to take some of the sparkle and shine and we'll just dump some of that in there and then like this is a pretty small shaker so you don't really need a, a lot of stuff in here Okay, and then some of this. These are so fun. I haven't used these yet. Okay, there are some quite large ones in here. I'm going to take out the larger ones. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to carefully peel this back. And we're going to place this over top and hopefully this is big enough because we want to make sure it's okay if a little bit of this shows like the adhesive shows but you don't want there to be any gaps because otherwise your shaker content will fall out so that appears to be the best way to do that again we'll trim off these little bits that are hanging over the other circles It might have been easier actually now that I think of it to do the other circles first and then and then do this guy okay so if we flip it over now we've got this fun little shaker pocket okay so now let's see what do we have left here I think this guy was here so let's add that one underneath here might be able to get away with it let's see yeah okay so I slid that underneath add a little bit of adhesive there okay and actually I think that was supposed to be green but that's okay we'll do this one green this guy's pink And this one's yellow. Okay. That worked out okay. Let's take that down, trim off this excess. And let's flip it over and see what it looks like. Fun, fun. Okay, again, it doesn't matter that those show because my photo is going to cover those up. Look how cute that looks. I love it. All right, let's add our ribbon. So this is going to go on here like this and that's going to cover our seam. So let's use some mini glue dots for that. So now it will look like it's one big piece. So I'll just put a few of these around and I will put the ribbon around the back. Oh, 
Oh, shaker on layouts are fun, Kim. I, I did a layout actually, I think it was with the ice cream suite when it was in the occasions catalog. Um, that beautiful paper that came with that, that bundle. And it was a full page shaker. So I cut a circle in the middle and made like the whole, the whole thing is a shaker. It's so fun. Oh, and my phone is ringing. Okay. Hopefully that didn't affect the video. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see here. Okay, we'll trim that down. We'll flip this over. And then the, what we have to do is we have to make everything even, right? Because this has dimension from the foam adhesive strips. So we're going to have to stick this on using dimensionals so that it's all even. And you know what? I'm not going to use dimensionals. I'm going to use the foam adhesive strips because our dimensionals are not the same height as the foam adhesive strips. So you want to use the same adhesive or same, same height adhesive that you've used. You don't want to mix it. Otherwise it's not going to sit properly. Okay. So I'm not going to use this whole strip. I'm going to just trim little bits. I am going to be pretty generous with my dimensionals just because this is a fairly large piece that I'm going, that I'm popping up. Let's use a little bit more in the middle here. should be plenty. Okay. I just don't want any, any bit of this to kind of sink. Let's add a little bit more here. Okay. So now we'll peel this off and we'll position it in place. I may add a bow to my ribbon. I'm not sure. We'll see once we have it, once we embellish it a little bit. to remember with so many pieces what I've taken off and what I haven't here. So does anybody have any fun plans for this weekend? Okay, this I think is the last piece. All right, so we're going to flip that over. I'm going to use my T-square so I can kind of make sure that I'm straight. And let's see, I gotta stand up for this. Move it down a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. All right. Ooh, craft day and then dinner with your sister. That sounds like fun. Oh, and Tracy's going to try to get creative in her hotel room. All right. Okay. Look how fun that is. I love all the colors. Okay. Let's go ahead and adhere this. just a little bit. Oh, and I don't want to cover this beautiful flower that's on here. So move it up a little. Okay. Thank you, Alice. All right. So we've got our photo on there. Now it's time to embellish and to figure out where we're going to put our title. 
So this is my title. And remember I said that I was going to color it with some Stampin' Blends just so that I can tie it into the colors that I'm using. So I'm just, just change it a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't look exactly like Bermuda Bay, but it's okay. It'll work better than the wood. Does anybody have any of these wood elements left in their stash? I'm excited for my Scrap Your Stash class next week. Um, this weekend I will be planning some of the layouts and filming the pre-recorded videos that everybody's gonna have access to using our kits that we put together. There's still time to register. You can find all the details on my events page if anybody is interested. It's gonna be fun. All right, so now that's quite dark, so I might not wanna put that on the black. I could do a white strip. I could have it up here, I could have it up here. I could put it on the photo. That might be a good spot for it. Okay, I'm gonna let it sit, sit there, or sit there while we have a look at our embellishments. Okay, these flowers I definitely want to include just because that will allow us to mimic these ones down here. And I had one left, so I've got five of them, which is always good. I love my odd numbers. This beautiful flower would be great to kind of mimic that flower. And this butterfly, I could incorporate this butterfly on here as well. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. I probably I won't use the clouds just because that looks like a stormy day kind of cloud. There is this. This could work for my journaling. So I don't have a ton of journaling to do. Just plan on putting the date and what it was for. I didn't want to cover that photo or that flower. So let's see. That could be cute there. Okay, let's see. I think this, I like that there. Let's curl up these wings. I feel like it's flying off the page going that way. I think it should go this way. And then we had these flowers. So these could be, I could do, or we could do butterfly down here. And maybe some flowers up here. So I'm just using my fingers to give these a bit more dimension. No, I think I like the butterfly up there better. We could add the flowers on top of these ones to give it, we could pop them up. That would give them a little bit more dimension. We could also, so you can see that this could be a stem. So we could add flowers on here. So we could just fill it in a little bit more. Okay, what do you guys think? Do you like it like that? Or should I put them on top of these for more dimension? Or should I add them, just really make this one a florally one? Feels like a lot of yellow flowers. Oh, 
oh, I could put that little one on top of that. I like that. Okay, I'm gonna definitely do this one. So this one, I this with bigger one is on here, and then I'm gonna put the smaller one on top. Now I have mini dimensionals here somewhere. That gives that, that one larger flower a little bit more, just a little bit more something. Okay, and I do like it on that longer stem like that. It's just a matter of how many I want on there. Oh, I could do that. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna put dimensional, we'll use one of these smaller ones in the center of the big one. I like the three there. And then we'll pop this in the center. And then I'll use a dimensional to stick this guy on. This time I'll use a big dimensional. And then these ones I think I'm just gonna put on flat. All right. Okay, and then this guy, now do I want it? I think it's gotta go there. I don't like those like that. So I think that does have to go there. Unless we do the big flower up here and the butterfly here. Okay, do we want the big flower in the upper left or the butterfly in the upper left? So that way or this way. I'll just give you guys a minute to respond. Let's add, I think, some mini glue dots to the back of this while I'm waiting. I'd use, if I was sticking this on cardstock, I would use um, multi-purpose glue to adhere this, but because I'm adhering it to my photo, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, I don't like to use multi-purpose glue to adhere anything to my photo or even put multi-purpose multi glue on the back of my photo. Okay, let's see. Um, butterfly upper left. Flower, upper left, flower, upper left, flower at the top, upper left flower. Okay, we've got more votes for the flower at the top. Okay, so let's see. I think I like it this way. And then, yeah, I might over, overlap that because otherwise, Okay, I think I have a piece of wax paper here. Just a sec. It's hard to see with my hand in the way. So here's a little trick for you. If you've got adhesive on something, you can stick it on wax paper because it's not gonna stick to the wax paper. And it will give you an idea because you can kind of see through it. Okay, so I can do that or I can have it underneath. or I can move this over. I don't wanna do that. So if it's gonna go on top, this would have to go a little bit further down. I think that's the ticket right there, okay. All right, so I'm gonna stick that on and then we're gonna add some dimensionals on here. So I don't want, let's use the big ones because I think they're a little bit higher. I want to make sure I don't put a dimensional right here. Okay, Our dimensionals stick really well. So I'm just going to use a couple of them. I'll pop 
pop that on there. I'm just making, being mindful that I don't go over the edge so that I can easily fit it into my, po my pocket page and my album. And then we'll do this guy. Actually, I just had an idea. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use Wink of Stella on his wings just to give him a little bit of sparkle. So just where the color is, just gonna use my Wink of Stella. Can you guys see that shimmer? So pretty. All right. Okay, and then this guy will go right here, just like that. So obviously I'm not gonna add a bow <laughs> with my ribbon, just because we've got all of this done. Okay, now do I need more butterflies? I do feel like I need another one up here. Let's do, um, where is my half butterfly? That's lots though. Lots of that guy. Let's see. Can we fit in a full? I'm going to do a partial full one up here. And I think I will do it in yellow. Let's bring this scrap piece paper in here. Like that. Okay. And then. I think I need a partial one down here, maybe like this. And I think I'm gonna do yellow again. There we go. Maybe I'm gonna do one more and I'm gonna do Bermuda Bay. being lazy and I'm not stamping or I'm not cleaning my stamp there we go okay so that filled in a couple of those empty spots I noticed that Sarah commented that it needs something in the lower left so I'm assuming she's talking about right here how there's no dimension so let's see what could we do we've got we could do a little cluster of things with some scraps here let's see what we've got left Okay, let's bring it in the paper trimmer. I'm gonna slide this, slide this aside for a minute. You know what we don't have on this layout yet? We don't have any baker's twine. That could be a good spot to add some baker's twine. Okay, so I'm just cutting like a half a strip or a half inch strip. Let's do something that's a little bit larger for this one. Let's do a three quarter inch strip. Boy, my paper trimmer is just shredding this paper. Okay, uh, what else have we got here? We've got some yellow, we could do some yellow. Remember I cut these with scissors, so they're not cut straight. So I'm trying to cut them straight first. Okay, we do have this little caterpillar too. We could put the caterpillar down at the bottom. That might be cute. And then we've got three of those elements that kind of look the same, like that kind of have that same kind of look to them. Okay, let's see, we might not need that one. If we did this, Or do we want to just put the caterpillar, pop the caterpillar up? 
there is actually I might have cut into it yeah I don't have any left because there was a leaf that you could cut out um, of the back of one of the cards but I obviously used most of it okay let's see do we want to pop up the caterpillar maybe like that or do you guys prefer like having the strips And then let's see, where's my white twine? Because twine always makes things better. Could do that. I like that. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the caterpillar. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's, caterpillars are just so creepy. I don't know. So we'll add these. On here. Just kind of layered just for some more color, a little bit of interest. And then we'll trim this guy down. Scissors. And we do still have the embellishments that come in this kit. A glue dot. But I don't know if I'm going to include those or not. They're kind of a... I, I don't know actually what they're intended to be used as. Maybe rocks. Where did I put them? But they're kind of shiny. Here they are. And they're all kind of different. We could put them in the flower centers. No, I think I'm going to leave them off. Okay, I think that this is done. Let's stick this down. I just need to add my journaling. The little bit that I'm going to do, which is not much, just basically add the date and what we were celebrating on there and then it'll be done. All right, so that turned out pretty fun, nice and colorful. All right, so thanks so much for watching. Sarah and Shauna, I will get back to you about the paper pumpkin kits and just let you know what your options are for that and uh, yeah if anybody else has any other questions feel free to shoot me a message i will post a photo of this a little bit later today and you'll also be able to find it on up on my blog all right so thanks so much for watching have a fabulous weekend we'll see you remember to join me monday at 9 30 a.m um, because i'll be going live monday through friday next week um, with the catalog kickoff facebook lives all right take care bye guys